my colleagues there are seven speakers i want to introduce one by one first dr aditya anand he is mbbs from jss medical college mysore post graduate from rio mento ophthalmic hospital bangalore a government medical college and research institute bangalore and presented paper posters you know, posters uh, at a state level our national level conference he is he is a key speaker in artificial intelligence in ime you know, 84th medicon bangalore now he is uh, now next speaker is abhishek anand he completed his mbbs from shet gs medical college akme hospital mumbai completed his ms ophthalmology and dnv from gurunanak eye center monana azad medical college new delhi he did his fellowship in the victor retinal surgery from virat nagar eye hospital dr agrawal uh, is it okay if I, if we call speaker one by one let's invite dr aditya first to speak aditya anand okay yeah. i request uh, dr anand to aditya anand to deliver his presentation good afternoon one and all i am just uh, trying to share my uh, yeah uh, actually it is saying you cannot start screen while other participant is sharing yes so, uh, now you can try dr agrawal has stopped yeah, sharing yeah just one second just one minute yeah yeah is it uh, visible now yes it's visible now your zoom screen is visible okay okay yeah now it is it, it, it is visible you yeah. please make it full screen yeah yeah i'll make it full screen one second now yeah, yeah now came. good to go yeah uh, <clears throat> so good afternoon uh, one and all so i will be uh, giving a talk on basic introduction of artificial intelligence uh so what is artificial intelligence so we can we will discuss uh, one by one so artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines especially computer systems and these include three components first is learning learning means the acquisition of information and rules for using the information next is the reasoning reasoning is using rules to reach approximate or definite conclusions and third is the self correction or self validation yeah so this uh, technology of artificial intelligence it is growing interest from organization and various industry as you can see it wants intelligence so organizations like in all the sectors like uh, whether it is medical or life sciences developmental tools finance media government everything wants artificial intelligence and you can see day by day year by year the use of artificial intelligence in all the industries are increasing in by leaps and bounds next the there are the big players the companies which play role in ai are these are the major and well known companies are facebook microsoft google ibm nvidia baidu and amazon the startups given for artificial intelligence and it is helping also in the medical sectors basically some of the companies which are very uh, Uh, famous like meta mind clotica signal science numenta and vicarious and deep mind and even the ibm company alchemy which is uh, now very prevalent in india so coming on to the uh, basic coverage of artificial intelligence so basically it includes it includes all these components as you can see here artificial intelligence includes the way it planning then robotics then machine learning natural language processing perception knowledge cognitive system all this so we will discuss in details one by one in the coming slides so come on to the artificial intelligence basics so what is actually this technology so the objective of this ai is to automatically detect and measure the pathologic features in images of the eye so the methods which it uses are it analyzes pixels or labels and group of pixels in fundus photographs or three dimensional voxels in oct images in some way now for this we have variety of approaches so the first approach we can this is called as the simple automated detectors by pattern recognition this is the 
simplest form of artificial intelligence. Here, programmers give the software mathematical descriptors of the features to detect and rule-based algorithms for searching these patterns on incoming images or the pattern recognition. So these all the, uh, po positive hits means the correct pattern recognitions are combined to produce a diagnostic indicator. The second step by which we can use artificial intelligence are the basic machine learning. In this approach, the algorithm is given some basic rules about what disease features look like, along with a training set of images from affected and unaffected eyes. So the algorithm examines the images to learn about the differences. Third is the advanced machine learning. This type of machine learning structure consists of one or two interconnected layers of small computing units called neurons, which mimic the multi-layered structure of the visual cortex. So each layer contains data of one or more variables or characteristics. The inputs to the first layer are the same disease feature detectors used in the basic machine learning. However, the outputs of the neurons in each layer feed forward into the next layer for further analysis by the data of that layer. And the final layer yields the diagnostic output. So it's like a web of information going from first layer to the final layer. Thus, the neural network learns to associate multiple specific inputs of disease feature detectors and results in a more accurate diagnostic output. So in this, you can see this is an illustration of supervised learning, the way computer algorithms are taught to recognize pattern. So in this case, the process shows how computer algorithms are taught to recognize features of retinal diseases and coded in retinal images, and the errors are penalized as the algorithm repeatedly cycles through a large set of images. The algorithm remembers the previous errors that resulted in penalties and constantly tries to avoid them. In other words, with each cycle, the algorithm tries to make increasingly correct guesses and eventually learns how to make the correct diagnosis. So it is clearly explained in the illustrative diagram here. So the fourth uh, uh, step for artificial intelligence or the layer is the deep learning with convolutional neural network or we can call it as CNNs. So now this deep learning is used because there are multiple interconnected layer of neurons and because they perform their task through repetition and self-correction, this new approach leads to latest iteration or software of AI. Thus it comes closer to resembling thinking like us. Like us means the human beings or ophthalmologists. Okay, so this is, and now it comes to the very most important part of artificial intelligence that is called as a disease feature based versus image based that is black box learning. So we should explain, like we should know this in details. So till now machine learning algorithms are multi-layered data algorithm based on clinically known characteristics of diseases such as hemorrhages or exudates. So it is supervised learning algorithm. Here scientists can verify that its output is based on the presence of the same image characteristic that a human would identify and they can adjust the algorithm if necessary. But this is the supervised learning algorithm. But however, Google has developed a successful system called Google Brain in 2016. Now this is unsupervised black box system. In this what happens in Google's deep learning algorithm teaches itself to correctly identify diabetic lesions in photographs even though it was not told what the lesions look like. So what's so exciting with the deep learning is, actually scientists are not yet sure what and how the system is looking at, but all they know is that it's arriving at a correct diagnosis as often as ophthalmologists are. Ultimately, artificial intelligence acts as a complement to the skills of physicians to provide better care for their patients. But this unsupervised black box system unsettles some specialists with fear due to unsupervised approach, but fascinates others. So you can see here is lesion-based disease detection. The retinal images is quality assessed. And if it is a positive hit, means it, if, it, it watches, if, if it matches with the artificial intelligence data, so it is called as a pass. Now there is called as a lesion detection here. So lesion is detected, anatomy is localized, 
and then the disease assessment is done. In this case, as you can see, that it is detecting diabetic retinopathy where DR is uh, positive or DR negative, so it detects like that. Now, black box means it is an unsupervised learning system. So it uses the, the images there and it directly without any uh, like this uh, quality assessment and pass, it will automate the feed it images or uh, which is in the Google brain software, it directly leads to the correct results. So sometimes it is a correct results and uh, sometimes it, 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 it might not be. So this is a neural nets called as how do super unsupervised deep learning system know what they know and come to conclusion. So now this opacity, it troubles many artificial intelligence researchers. So it is a, it, as you, you know, it's a next transformation is ophthalmology. So here we will explore what artificial intelligence means for practicing ophthalmologists, its promises, limitation, and what the future holds. So basically it is going to create a revolution in ophthalmology. It has already started, starting with the retina. I, uh, the, this, the work is mostly done in the, this sector. So most pro important, pro pro immediately promising computer algorithms are the field of retinal diseases. So it is basically, it is accurately detect diabetic retinopathy with much sensitivity and specificity and diabetic macular edema. And in other retinal conditions also, it is very useful as in ARMD, ROP and retinal pseudodrusin. And the research is going on in the other sectors of ophthalmology, in pediatric cat tract, glaucoma, ketoconus or, or corneal ectasia or oculoplastic reconstructions. So here I'm just going to brief about DR because our, my upcoming speaker will be doing that in detail. But like I'm just going over a very brief here. So it is used for the retinal diseases for detecting diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema for fundus photographs. And its potential is to provide more efficient and objective analysis of images and prediction of disease progression. Now, there is an FDA approved AI based tools. There are three tools which are approved as of now by US FDA is LBO Stroke Platform. It was approved in February 2018. IDX DR device was approved in April 2018 and it is the first artificial intelligence system in ophthalmology. And OsteoDetect was approved in May 2018. It is used to aid in the detection of risk fracture in adults. Okay, so I'll just uh, wrap it up. Uh, you can see like it's IDX DR device is used for the detection of uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy, even its application in the ROP even in ARMD, so, uh, and even in the corneal topography, the analysis is done a better means for predicting ectasia, even in IOL power selection using artificial intelligence. Okay, so now, and even in uh, glaucoma, and uh, it also predicts heart disease by looking at your eyes, but okay, so I'm going through, going through my last slide. The current limitations of AI was the quality of the training sets, the problems with image quality, black box dilemma, and the wrong answers. I appreciate Dr. Adit, so, please wind it up. Yeah, yeah, but like the last slide. Yes. It is, uh, finally, I just might uh, like, uh, it's a uh, last point. Uh, it is an augmentation. It's not replacement of specialist. And final decision and management will depend on specialists based on the artificial intelligence. A lot of research are going on in other institutes in ophthalmology. So whatever be the pros and cons of AI, it is going to play a big role and will fuel a medical revolution in next 10 years by enabling far more efficient drug delivery, diagnosis and research. Okay, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anand, excellent mm -hmm. presentation. Now mm -hmm. I will go for the next speaker. Dr. Abhishek Anand. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you're audible. Y yes. And we can see your PPT as well. Okay, thank you. So can I go ahead? Please go ahead. Just, so just, for, just for a minute, just, just wait for, just I want to introduce him. I will mute myself. Uh, yes, Dr. Abhishek, uh, yes, Dr. Abhishek Anand has completed his MBBS from Seth GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. Completed his MS and DNB from the Guru Nanak Kai Center and Maulana Ajad Medical College in New Delhi. He did his fellowship in the Victor Retinal Surgery from Biratnagar Eye Hospital and Lahan Eye Hospital, currently working as an assistant professor in Victor Retina in Regional Institute of Ophthalmology in IGMS Patna. He is, the, he is a recipient of Dr. A.K. Prachad Gold Medal, AAO 2010 Best Poster Award, and awarded many travel grants and co-researchers for ongoing national and international 
clinical trials. He, is, he has around 111 public, publication in a peer review index journal. He has presented his work at the various national and international conference. His main area of interest are pediatric vitreoretinal disorder, myopic macular degeneration, and supracoroid therapy and macular buckling. Now go ahead with uh, Dr. Abhishek Anand for your presentation for diabetic retinopathy. First of all, thank you, sir, for a very kind introduction. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, okay. go ahead. Are my slides legible now? Yes, yes. You okay, it so the full screen, no clue. Okay, so I will be presenting artificial intelligence and diabetic retinopathy. I will be just giving an overview of what were the things and how we should analyze this thing. Because a lot of us have a lot of circumspect on this AI thing. We all know that the incidence and prevalence of diabetes mellitus is increasing. And India is, is the established diabetes capital of the world. Early detection, so AI becomes very important for a country like India. Early detection and treatment of DR is the one of the main armamentarium to remain and it is one of the priority for preventing diabetes associated sight loss worldwide now the current models are based on mainly human rating as we have in india it is what are the cons it is this is a labor intensive process it requires trained human graders who should be trained to undergo also regularly quality assurance and be retained so retaining the staff is also a big uh, big challenge in india and the scalability is a major issue because of the human manpower in, strong, uh, in this. And there is a high cost of, recurring high cost of human power, manpower. And obviously we have fixed working hours. So if we apply the current UK annual screening protocol to in globally, we would require at least 2.2 billion retinal images to be screened or graded in 2013. So here comes the role of AI. In the last decade, large strides have been made in developing automated retinal, retinal analysis, imaging analysis systems, some designed specifically to detect DR. These rely on different image analysis methods, generally based either on human design, lesion detection algorithms, or machine learning, or a mixture of these two broad approaches. What are the advantages? They do not get tired and grade thousands of images a day and often able to provide results within seconds to minutes of taking the photo. So you can install it in a village setup and you can get the results regarding the triads and the risk factor. The scaling of automatic day or screening programs are furthermore largely just a matter of accuracy. So mainly money is the question, not the human manpower. What? One important thing in diabetic retinopathy screening is actually prime, already prime for telemedicine. Diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy is only contingent on the use of a single modality image, that is a color fundus photograph, if we are able to acquire it. And it is determined by classic morphological features in the retina, that is microendrums, hard injuries, vitreous embryos, without the need for additional clinical data and input, making diabetic retinopathy screening highly amenable to teleophthalmology as a digital service to decentralize care. What we are currently giving in India is centralized care, that we have existing good care in the cities or district level. So we have to actually decentralize this care. The use of artificial intelligence for diabetic retinopathy screening is based on several key factors underlying its relative success. So there is already a synergy between two digital innovations. One is the telemedicine and artificial intelligence for diabetic retinopathy screening. And there is obviously a clear public health care need for diabetic retinopathy screening that cannot be met with current models of care. With, and we should see our AI as an incremental technology and not as a disruptive technology. With foundation in teleophthalmology already established, artificial intelligence solutions are easier to incorporate in the diabetic retinopathy screening programs. And it should be considered as an incremental technology to teleophthalmology and existing shortages and the required resources to cater to the growing burden of diabetic mental patients create the clear need to implement artificial intelligence based solutions to increase the capacity of DRS screening. So this in teleophthalmology, we are basically give, uh, taking a photograph and we are allowing a grader to grade the image. So it has its own limitation, but what if we combine teleophthalmology with AI, we can actually make the system more robust and more AI. Now, whenever we are developing a framework for an opportunities for AI, we have to gratify it also. Like we can use an AI for DR screening. And once we have passed this screening and we have tried that, okay, these are the patients, uh, which are at risk, then we can develop another AI for DR prediction. So this is another model. And once we have established case, we are 
likely to establish another AI for DR and DM. So it should be a stratification level. The current prevailing systems, there are a lot of automatic DR detection of DR at various places in the world. The, as we have seen in the last slide in 2018, US FDA approved the first AI based DR detection system in, in USA. Now there is a very important thing. There are multiple systems that are available in the world, but what we have to look is the sensitivity and the specificity because with lower sensitivity, more cases of DR are missed, which goes against the main aim of a DR screening program, the early detection. And with lower specificity, a relatively large numbers of false positives that warrant further examination are returned, which wastes the resource that automated DR screening is trying to spare. However, with the newer deep learning system, as we have discussed in the previous uh, talks, offers the promises of an impressively high sensitivity and specificity. So we can see from 2015, which was the first DR uh, IR was introduced, and it had a sensitivity and specificity of around 91%. And then there are multiple systems which are already in progress. And these are the techniques these uh, algorithms are using. Now, one of the limitations of developing an AI system is a large set of retinal images on which the train and validate these algorithms is the biggest hurdle to development of an AI system. The main issue is the confidentiality, data protection, and country specific regulations. Image data set, data set need to be human grade and labeled as a reference standard. And the publicly available Macedo 2 data set contains over 1700 labeled retinal images, has been used to validate and compare some of the studies. However, well now what is important is very important. However, this data set contains images of excellent quality of a level that is not representative of real life screening applications and developing deep learning systems against human grading. So you are basically, if you are, uh, once you understand the deep learning system and then you give you a parameter of human grading as a gold standard limit, this potentially, you know, limits the system limit only. So automatic retinal images might surpass that of human graders in the future. This is however not quantifiable if human grading is taken as the objective truth. So the image that you are using to train, it may, they might itself be a barrier to the deep learning system. Um, so uh, rather than uh, what we, every, many persons are advocating is that the patient outcome based truth rather than clinician agreement to validate such AI systems have shown that it performs better than human graders. Now, evolution of artificial intelligence it has been a long time. In 1950, John McCarthy first used the phrase of AI, and a major progress is the shift of traditional pattern recognition techniques to the near and exciting deep learning system, which we already uh, have discussed in the past. Now, diverting mellitus is a multi what is the advantage of deep learning? The diverting mellitus is a multifactorial complex disease. Our existing methods for predicting the development of diabetic retinopathy are imperfect, whereby Glycemic exposure, that is glycerated hemoglobin and duration of diabetes, only explains approximately 11% in variation of the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy, as was reported in the DCCT trial. However, unsupervised learning of deep learning algorithm enables them to self-learn predictive features from input data for labeled outcome without being explicitly programmed to detect a specific morphological features by the expert. Therefore, their predictive capabilities are not restricted by our current existing knowledge of disease phenotypes and risk factors. What can we, a deep learning can give us an advantage in DME management. We all know that variable treatments response to treatment modalities occurs during anti vhf therapy, but we still don't have any concurrent answer why it is happening. A recent pilot study has revealed that deep learning could be used as effectively predict patients with DME that are more likely to respond to anti vhf based on pre-treatment OCT imaging scans. So deep learning can shed light on phenotype variations, clinical factors that contribute to variation in outcomes, and a new era of personalized management service is in the horizon. Why do I tell so? How many of the ophthalmologists can tell from the photo below if the patient is a male or female? It's a 50-50 chance. However, for Google's deep learning AI, it's almost 99% chance. With the advent of COVID-19, the AI has become more pertinent. Ophthalmologists and other eye care professionals are at in high are in, in at high risk of community transmission during patient evaluation. AI coupled with teleophthalmology is well positioned to facilitate continuity of decentralized care for diabetes mellitus and diabetic retinopathy patient during COVID-19 pandemic. And in fact, COVID-19 may be a catalyst for realizing the value of artificial intelligence and digital health technologies that have long been neglected as a result of various barriers to adoptions. Now, we all know that 
they does everything it works on economics so if we add on a lifetime basis of how much economic uh, burden a country has to face it's almost 20 to 40 percent saving that is being given by you if we incorporate ai into our screening programs however there are barriers to ai adoption and mainly it is the cost of the automated system equipment hardware trained technical staff to operate the equipment secretarial staff and current commercially available systems require still require trained human grader verification especially with the relatively low specificity of most systems one of the major concern is is ai a concern for ophthalmologists unlikely that we will see wholly automated dr screening system any soon time soon human graders will still be needed to judge atypical or low quality images as well as for quality monitoring increased detection of patients requiring tertiary care will increment our practice and not decrease it and deep learning can demystify many concerns in risk stratification and dr management along with development of a new era of personalized level of medicine in the end we will have to embrace ai and together we will rise thank you hello dr agrawal you are on mute Thank yes, uh, Dr. Abhishek, your presentation is very good and excellent and it is exhaustive also. Thank you again. Uh, whether Satya Prakash Tiwari is available or not. Thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity. Mm, okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Agrawal, I'm not able to find Satya Prakash. Can we go to the next speaker, please? Uh, yes, yes. Now, next, uh, I am going for the next speaker and I am introducing him as... Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Professor Vibhuti Prasanna Sinha. He is a pass out of Government Medical College, Jabalpur, MS graduation from a SMCC GMH Reva, Madhya Pradesh in 2002, senior residency from RIO uh, IGMS uh, in 2002. Starting his senior residency, he is serving as an institute till date. And now he is the head of the department of this institute in uh, year 2014. And he is the youngest head of the department uh, we have. He, is also have award, he has also been awarded Dr. A.K. Prashad Gold Medal and Ajit Sina Gold Medal by Bihar Optimum Society in 2012. And Young Achiever Award in ISCKRS and Now, uh, Dr. P Dr. Bibhuti, please start your presentation. Yeah, he will be speaking in the glaucoma practice in our, of in artificial intelligence. Okay, thank you. Start. Bibhuti, just start. Uh, Dr. Bibhuti, can you please unmute yourself? Okay. Thank you. We can hear you. So uh, thank you, Dr. J.J. Agrawal, sir, for giving me this opportunity to talk on uh, artificial intelligence and glaucoma practice. I'll be a little brief as uh, uh, the introduction part has already been covered. Uh, but just to summarize, artificial intelligence is defined as creation of automated systems to perform tasks that are regarded as requiring human intelligence. So it is one step ahead of human intelligence. Only thing is, it need to have little bit of uh, multiple neural network to develop the uh, advantages which human has got. AI has permeated into the nearly every sector of the science, technology, and medicine. And same is the uh, same is true for the ophthalmology also. Uh, and it is also very important that in ophthalmology, visual examination or image pattern based recognitions form the basis of ocular diagnosis. And that is the same thing that is applied to the artificial intelligence also. And so it is very pertinent to be used in the ophthalmological practices also. So some of the key examples are IVA detection programs and its successes like diabetic retinopathy. And this is the first FDA approved aid diagnostic system also. Now, types of artificial intelligence, there can be simple where the programmers gives the software mathematical descriptions 
of features to detect and a rule based algorithm pattern so pattern recognition is done and this is a simple automated detectors when we go to the basic machine learning the algorithm is given some basic rules about what does its features look like along with the training set of images so we train the basic machine also and based on our training the artificial intelligence start working and differentiating and deciphering the abnormal from the normal image then comes the advanced machine learning that consists of one or two interconnected layers or small compound computing units that is neurons and what it does is it the output comes in form of uh, numericals and that is the language of computers and that's how it detects the output also in the deep learning that is the most advanced one with the convolutional neural network there are multiple interconnected layers of neurons and that's how this is the superior most type of the artificial intelligence and which will be coming into the play in near futures in uh, ophthalmology also so what are the uses as numer enumerated mass screening is one of the most important area where artificial intelligence has to be used will be used diagnostic imaging like analyzes retinal fundus photograph diabetic retinopathy amd rop glaucoma as well as iop calculations so where it can be used in glaucoma we know that screening is still one of the very difficult part of glaucoma programs we have to screen out lot of patients we know the uh, uh, incidence uh, percentage of the glaucoma but we are not able to reach to the population and that's where the artificial intelligence can work it can also help us in diagnosis early arriving at the early diagnosis of the patient further it can diagnose and detect the pattern changes in the patient progressions and so progression can also be assessed with the help of artificial intelligence and finally it can prognosticate which is there in now newer generations of machines which are doing visual field in, in uh, assessments so first use of machine learning classifier for artificial use was way back in 1994 to discriminate between the normal and glaucomatous field defect so this was the earliest one the classification of visual field defect has also been independently performed through unsupervised mlc which has been explained beautifully by dr uh, abhishek anand what is unsupervised mlc now what are the clinical applications in glaucoma number one is automatically detecting features related to glaucoma that has got significant great significance on its timely diagnosis if 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 our clinical acumen is uh, conjoined with the artificial intelligence maybe we will diagnose the patient much earlier than when it appears into the patient clinical panorama so a pre clinical diagnosis a pre perimetric diagnosis is one of the field where this artificial intelligence is going to help us based on automatically localization of optic nerve head and the extraction of the optic disc and optic curve from the fundus image cdr can be calculated and this artificial intelligence model can help us in screening the patients in the periphery by untrained uh, uh, evaluators who can just capture the images and then the artificial intelligence will help us in identifying the amount of changes or the uh, cd ratio to segregate the patients who are, who will be requiring further evaluations then rnfl defect can serve as the earliest sign of glaucoma and several researchers have explored diagnostic accuracy of different method using rnfl thickness parameter to diagnose glaucoma and that forms the very basic of diagnosis or the diagnostic acumen, uh, acumen or the equipment which we are using that is optical core and stomography in cases of intraocular pressure sensitivity trigger face which is a contact lens based continuous iop monitoring device which actually measures only the corneal strain changes to iop fluctuation that is also artificial intelligence is being used coming to the visual field progression the first successful implementation of mlc was to detect differentiate between the visual field normal visual field to uh, uh, to to a field of glaucomatous patient and that was actually based on the back propagations neural network that demonstrated the ability to detect worsening of the visual field also now algorithms such as the variational bayesian independent component analysis mixture model used to detect visual field progression changes and that this method is successfully identifying more progression than emgt that means this program can be utilized for early diagnosis of progressions now fundus photograph 
with recent advances in the use of telemedicine this is this is very important now the computers are capturing the images the uh, pho photographic images are captured and these photographic images are now converted into numericals based on artificial intelligence and then the computer is able to actually identify the boundaries actually it is helpful to in identifying what is normal what is abnormal so ml algorithm using fundus photograph can detect early glaucomatous optic neuropathy and differentiate other optic neuropathy that may mimic glaucoma and some of the ai that evaluates glaucomatous fundus photographs are pegasus netra ai and uh, google net netra we are we are all um, uh, uh, aware of that is an nice kind of the artificial intelligence which is being used so the challenge is now each photograph consists of millions of pixels and that to be converted into numericals is little difficult and that will require training of mlc that is a, a machine learning uh, ca calibrator calibrators and develop ai in glaucoma recent development are mostly based on the oct images and mlc analyzes data from the newer sdoct are comparable in detecting glaucoma versus the regional or global oct and that is very important the oct is giving us picture which are being uh, actually actually uh, converted into numericals and these numericals are helping us in identifying the red and green disease as as we see in the printouts and so that is going to help us in this image we can see the artificial intelligence of the netra can detect the outer boundary and the boundaries of the cup and that is how it can help us in identifying a abnormal patient from a normal patient and further it will give you a calculation and which can be implied for detection of the patients or the screening of the patients coming to the optic nerve structures early application of mlcs to structural measures of glaucoma utilized techniques such as confocal laser ophthalmoscopy and scanning laser polarimetry they are also type of artificial intelligence and the most recent application of mlc is to structure stru identify the structural glaucomatous changes have focused on oct imaging so oct is now the basic of artificial intelligence to be used for the detection of the glaucoma or the uh, evaluation of the progression of the glaucoma in uh, patients now what are the future prospect a single algorithm that combines relevant data from the individual patients to determine the presence and progression of glaucoma is a common goal of mlc so we have to actually identify what is that single algorithm that is going to give us us uh, uh, an insight into detecting the presence or progression of glaucoma the most exciting capability of ai will be to extend to extract knowledge independent of human interventions such that new insights and pattern of glaucoma can be discovered so if artificial intelligence can throw something new uh, about the glaucoma the changes which are occurring which are still not being known to uh, uh, to human uh, uh, humans just because of artificial intelligence and multiple neural network it can identify the finest of changes which can be detected and that will throw light into detection of glaucoma and ways to which the extract this, this information and to determine which piece of informations are most important will be critical to advancing knowledge through the use of ai this is very important so take home message of my uh, talk is there has has been extensive growth in the recent years in applying machine learning to glaucoma we all are using artificial intelligence although we are not aware or we don't want to be uh, get into the deeper part of the machines we are all only concerned with the print out but that is not so the print out is coming out of artificial intelligence it is giving you insight and that is through artificial intelligence more the data more the artificial intelligence will work in a precise manner so technique used in ai can successfully analyze and categorize data from the visual field optic nerve structures and ocular biomechanical properties it has the potential to revolutionize the screening program and that is going to be the crux of uh, uh, the whole ai systems in diagnosis and classification of glaucoma however till the time it achieves a greater sensitivity and specificity a thorough clinical examination will stay as a gold gold standard for diagnosis of glaucoma and that is very important even if we do have artificial intelligence it can detect it will be it will able be it will be able to di differentiate between normal from abnormal but these abnormal patients will require further evaluation 
by a thorough clinician who is uh, good at his clinical acumen to identify and treat these patients. Thank you very much for your patient law. Thank you, sir. Very good presentation by Dr. Poyam Bhavuti. And uh, I am really thankful to you. And uh, now next, whether there is a Dr. Sadhir Prakash Tiwari is there? Uh, let me check, doctor. Just give me one minute. Uh, he's not here yet. You can go to the next speaker. Uh, yes, next speaker is Dr. Mamta. Yeah. that uh, Dr. Mamta, Mamta, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Thank Agarwal, you. Sir, please continue. Yeah. Dr. Agarwal, you can please introduce Dr. Mamta. Uh, yes, one minute. Just one minute. Sir, even I have joined. Dr. Satyaprakash has joined. So next time you can call me, sir. Welcome, Dr. Satya Prakash. Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Satya Prakash, can you deliver your lecture, your presentation is this earlier or you will be... Sir, uh, can I just continue with my presentation right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Mamta, okay. madam, can continue okay. and then later on I can. Okay, okay. Can you see my uh, slide? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, uh, currently, Mamta, madam, slide is visible. Okay. We have only 40 minutes just, to go for this session. May I just continue, sir, with my uh, presentation? Let's wait for Dr. Agrawal to introduce you. Uh, can I introduce, sir? Uh, yes, Dr. yes. I just, yes I Dr. Mamta is, uh, Dr. Mamta is a past uh, postgraduate of uh, RIO Chennai. And she did her DNB from uh, uh, Gujarat, Ahmedabad. And then after that, she, is, uh, she did her uh, uh, cornea and refractive fellowship from Ahmedabad. And presently, she is pursuing senior residency at uh, PMCH Patna. She is uh, uh, one of the leading person, leading lady in Bihar Ophthalmological Society. She is also a data proceeding of Bihar Ophthalmological Society. And she is a leading uh, cornea specialist of the state. May I invite Dr. Mamta Singh to uh, give her uh, presentation that is artificial intelligence in corneal ectasia. Dr. Mamta, please. Thank you so much, sir, for those kind words. And I'm really thankful to Agrawal, sir, for this given opportunity. Uh, and I will be talking about uh, artificial intelligence and how it plays its role in corneal ectasia. We are living in a really smart world. And uh, the moment we switch on the TV, we get to see different choices based on what we have seen so far. Similarly, we are so fond of talking to Alexa and Siri and so fond of flaunting our smartwatches. So ultimately, we can say that we are not immune, we are not alien, or we are not you know, reluctant to use artificial intelligence. And so is the case in uh, the field of ophthalmology. This is the list or this is the chart of uh, PubMed articles on the subject of artificial intelligence from the year 2007 to 2018. And we can see diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma are definitely leading the way. But keratoconus and dry eye also here now coming up in a big way. So what exactly is artificial intelligence? It is the ability of a digital machine or computer to accomplish tasks that traditionally have required human intelligence. And machine learning is a part of AI, and its characteristic is uh, the ability to predict and improve with experience. Deep learning, again, is a part of machine learning, which where a large amount of data is fed to a multi-layered neural network. These are the different models of artificial intelligence which are being used in ophthalmology. So let's talk about corneal ectasia. And if we talk about keratoconus, uh, the different studies, they report a large variation in the given prevalence of keratoconus, ranging from 0.003% to 2.3%. And this large variation is not just because of geographical variation. This is also because of the machine which was used for diagnosing keratoconus. A very important study involving 30,167 eyes of uh, LASIK, uh, of uh, refractive eyes, I would say refractive surgery eyes, has quoted, and to quote this article, I would say, 
the current widely accepted risk factors are not sufficiently rigorous for screening out potential ecclesia. There is a need to augment accuracy with higher sensitivity and specificity. So we can easily say that we need an instrument which can give us an objective result, which can give us a reproducible result, which is able to pick up subtle changes that may be missed by human eyes. We should be able to screen out diseases, especially in a low resource countries like ours, which can increase access to expert assessment and should be inexpensive. And that is the reason why we are searching for a good artificial intelligence device. So how we are using this AI machine in different corneal ectasia, Let's talk about keratoconus. One of the recent study published in JAMA 2020 used 6,465 topo images. And this large amount or large uh, collection of topo images were given to three refractive surgeon experts. These experts, they divided these images into five categories, normal cornea, suspected irregular cornea, early stage keratoconus, keratoconus and myopic postoperative cornea. So based on these five categories of topo images, ultimately an AI system was uh, invented, which was named PIRSS. Now, how this PIRSS will behave in comparison to human intelligence, that was the idea of this study. So what they did, they gave 100 test images to this AI system, and the same test images were given to a group of ophthalmologists. And this group of ophthalmologists had five senior refractive surgeons, five students of refractive surgery, five senior ophthalmologists who were not refractive surgeons and five medical students who hadn't studied refractive surgery. And now their uh, performance co were compared with each other, this group of ophthalmologists with artificial intelligence. It has been found that the performance of AI system was comparable or even slightly better than the refractive surgeons. And for other group of ophthalmologists, AI performed in a much better manner. So definitely AI scores here over human intelligence. I'm not saying that it can surpass it, but definitely it can perform. Then comes refractive surgery screening. Uh, based on Pentacam images, a uh, particular index has been recommended now. That is Pentacam Random Forest Index, or commonly known as PR PRFI. This has been proposed by Lopez in the year 2018. And this has been found to perform better with better specificities and sensitivity to, to the commonly used Bellin algorithm, Bellin embrasive algorithm that we use very often. Similarly, the biomechanical property of cornea is being used uh, to develop an AI-based system and Sankar Netrale and NN group is working on this. So what is the advantage of having an AI, uh, this AI system? Definitely, it helps us in screening disorders. It gives us objective reproducible result with good sensitivity and specificity. It increases access to expert assessment. Once it is developed, it can be run on any computer. So definitely, it becomes inexpensive in that case. It can give us immediate feedback, which can increase patient compliance and improve in final patient care. And by screening patients who actually need treatment, we can bring more patient to, or more relevant patient to ophthalmologist. That is one of the major advantages. Definitely it has got its own share of disadvantages, like it needs high data set. The black box nature makes it difficult to interpret. When we cannot understand something, it's difficult to understand. It's against the human nature. That is the black box nature of AI. Then we need continually to modify a new intelligent, new or more intelligent algorithm. As the machine will grow, we need every time we have to uh, modify our algorithm also. It does not provide full quantitative result in case of high inter-individual inter variability. In those cases, we need to have a very generalized or very vast amount of data, in fact. And definitely, it has got ethical and regu regulatory issue. If something goes wrong, wrong whom to blame? Definitely, you cannot say the machine did this. There has to be a human factor in it. So with this, I would like to say thank you. Thank you, Agrawal sir, again. Thank you, Dr. Mamta, uh, for your nice presentation. Now, it is very well informative also. Now, uh, will you tell me how uh, we will use in the general practice uh, uh, for uh, assessment of corneal ectasia and others as, in, uh, as we are a normal general practitioner? How I, we should use? Sir, for a general 
practitioner, whatever AI system we have right now in the market, it's mainly Pentacam based. So for a general ophthalmologist to use this AI based system, we need to have at least the basic knowledge of Pentacam device, what the images are actually. We can't, we, we can't, we can't really just keep blindly follow the uh, machine. There has to be a human factor, as I said. So we need to understand the Pentacam basic images and based on those images, definitely we can use these devices very, uh, very easily, sir. Because this is going to be in the market, we can run this on our own platform, our own computer, if we just have the uh, given Pentacam photograph with us. Is there any uh, software is available in the market to analyze this? So the different indices are there right now. Like a particular index has been given based on AI system, but there is no clear cut, there is no FTO approved system or AI based model right now for corneal ecclesia. The AcuSimus, which is coming, that is still in the processor. It has not been given uh, complete clearance. Okay, thank you. Dr. Agrawal, thank you so much. Yes. I just want to ask you, just want to ask you one thing, Dr. Agrawal. Yes. Uh, how many speakers left in your list? Yeah, three, three or more. Three. Three. So we have to wind up this at 2.25. We have 30 minutes. Okay, it will, it will okay. Thank you so much. Okay, next, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Satya Prakash Tiwari. Whether he is available? Yes, yeah. I am available. But ah, I think you? my video yes. is muted. It is not uh, showing, sir. Hello? You have, you have you muted? Know, I have unmuted my audio. But whenever I am clicking on start video, it is not opening. Okay, you uh, as a you, you you are the gold medalist uh, in the MBBS and also the MS. You are a fellow retina, retina I've been the eye hospital uh, Pondicherry and the consultant of the Stipunj Eye Hospital Patna and Bihar. Now you go ahead for you with your presentation. Dr. Satpakas, you can share your screen if possible. I think uh, that can happen. Maybe your computer is not taking your uh, camera system is not being actually. Okay. So um, you... log into some different system and then uh, till now you can continue with other speaker and uh, in a moment I can log into okay. a different system and so that I can. Agrawal, sir, can we shift to the next uh, speaker? Uh, yes. Next speaker <laughs> is myself. <laughs> okay. Okay. Am I audible? <laughs> Yes, sir, you are audible. Please go ahead. Uh, I am from all the Patna Medical College, from MBBS and MS both. And I am a senior consultant at the Kurji Hospital and, and Agarwal Eye Center, Research Center, Patna. I am the past president of Patna Optimic Society. And I have presented uh, many papers in the, in the state, national and international conference. I have been awarded many times in the state as well as in, uh, in national level. Thank you. And now I am want to present my presentation. Okay. Whether I, my screen is here? Not yet, doctor. Can you, can you see the, my screen? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, now it's coming up. You can make okay. a full screen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, doctor, we can see it in full screen. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Yes. My topic is artificial intelligence based IOL power calculation the emerging new trend over the current practice. To calculate the IOL power, we have multiple formulas for different situations. So we hear many parts, like for short eye, normal eye, and the for long eye. Even then, the results are not perfect. They all require input data regression-based calculation method, and I have a problem of effective lens position, which is still a challenging issue. No human can even write a single formula that takes account every adjustment or variable. That's why you, for biometry, we now use, till now we use the decision tree to take the decision which formula you should use for a particular case. This is a cumbersome intuition and need lot of experience. 
but how can we convert this intuition into the, an approach that is easily available and useful to even the less experienced surgeon? How to be closer to the perfect IOL power? To answer, we have to transform the calculation into the two main approaches. Using the direct artificial intelligence approach for pattern recognition that is used in the Hill RBF formula, and using the swept source multiple formula, here we create the 3D surface from the big data collected from the sweet spots of multiple formula. Sweet spots are the places where we get the maximum correct responses for a given amount of inputs because for a formula, not all the ranges of input gives the equally maximum correct response. After creating these uh, uh, surfaces, we enter the data and per the perfect results are obtained by using the artificial intelligence pattern recognition within the big data in LADA super surfaces. This is developed by you know, John LADAS. Now, how Hill RBF works? When we upload the data of a patient, Hill RBF finds distinct pattern in apparently random clouds of data points already created by large number of cases. Thus, it is a pattern recognition based on artificial intelligence. The Hill RBF method is a pure data-driven IOL power calculation. It is free from limitation of lens position estimation, that is effective lens position, free from the limitation of inherent to the standard formula. These are adaptive, dynamic, and constantly becoming better and better. It works best with the combination of lens star biometer and Alcon SN16 IOL. But Hill RBF has a limitation. It gives impression as inbound and outbound. Inbounds are those where prediction value is reliable and prediction value is high probability within 0.5 of the target outcome. But when it is outbound, then outbound shows the prediction value may not match the target outcome within 0.5 or not enough data point to validate. This is the interface of the Hill RBF calculator version three. Now, come to the LADA super formula. How does it work? LADA super formula based on creating LADA super surfaces from the sweet spots of multiple formula. For multiple formula. We have already told about the sweet, what is the sweet spots. They are the maximum correct responses for a given amount of input. Now, this is the example of super surface of SRKT. In this surface, plots are uh, in, presented in three dimensions showing the IL power in the Z axis and the axial length in, on the cornea in an X and Y axis. It can be plotted for any formula. Super Ladas formula has been constructed using sweet spots of four formulas, upper Q, holiday one, holiday one with one coach axis uh, axial length adjustment and the Hegis. But uh, Barrett uh, universal formula is not included. Here, the, it is first with the sweet spots are collected from the each formula, then it is connected each other from each other. And lastly, as shown in the slides, it is amalgamate, uh, amalgamated to uh, get the one form, one surface that is LADA super surface. This is the interface of the LADA super formula. As soon as we entered the data in this uh, 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 formula, we get the result instantaneously along with the three dimension graph. A surgeon knows instantly that he, if he is handling the typical or unusual eyes. If you compare the LADA super formula with the Hill RBF formula, LADA super formula eliminates the risk of outbound result as happens in the Hill RBF, as it has a wide range of database and there is no limitation. Hill RBF works best in the combination of lens star biometer and Alcon SN16. But there is no such issue with the LADA super formula. With LADA super formula, no need of surgeon to account for unusual eye because it is single answer for any IL calculation query, even for extreme eyes. If we compare the LADA super formula with the Barrett universal formula, which we use in a regular practice, here, if you superimpose the plots of the LADAs and the Barrett, Barrett, Barrett calculator, we see that they are widely overlap, that is so in the blue area, that shows the identical result, but the difference are the for the extreme eyes shown in the red area. So there is a dilemma for the Barrett formula. So in those cases, 
let us perform that is better than the barrett universal formula so it is an edge over the barrett universal formula now there is another formula that is kane kane's formula the british ophthalmological journal claims that uh, it is more accurate than other it also uh, uses the artificial intelligence with the theoretical optics but it needs large cohort study and validation for extreme eye calculation during uh, uh, here it it lada super formula is not dependent upon the effective lens position so it is good for extreme eye calculation for toric calculator and the post lasi calculator are yet to come in the lada super formula the for post lasi calculation no artificial intelligence based formula till now for toric eye or calculator in calculation we use lada super formula for spherical part and barrett toric calculator for cylinder part though the barrett toric calculator is also there it both keeps the both spherical and cylinder part but barrett toric calculator is depends upon the effective lens position where the super lada formula is not so it is better to use combination lada super formula for the spherical part and the barrett toric calculator for the cylinder part to conclude the advantage of artificial intelligence formula is it today it is it to totally it is data and data driven artificial intelligence from pattern with pattern recognition without estimating the effective lens position artificial intelligence based formula is continuously evolving thus becomes more and more accurate it is more accurate more than in 90% accuracy lada super formula is better and a single answer for any iol query in calculation query there is no outbound limitation so it is so, uh, edge over the uh, hill rbf formula it incorporates the sweet spots of many existing formula in a single um, formula this for iol power i toric iol calculation as i have already told that combination of lada super formula and the barrett toric calculator gives the excellent result it is a time saving the no need to create a calculation tree by using different formula as you we are using previously and then guessing approximate uh, i corrected i will power the task of i will power calculation can be delegated to the technician and uh, doctor can uh, totally focus on surgery leave the mathematics to the artificial intelligence formula thus lada super formula or uh, uh, hill rbf formula is though it, they are very good and even in this the lada super formula is a grand master of biometry and artificial intelligence being the game changer thank you thank you for your kind hearing now next speaker is uh, dr satyaprakash tiwari to introduce him he is uh, a mbbs gold medal and uh, as well as he ms he has uh, done his uh, um, fellowship in the from pondicherry uh, institute and now he is a uh, separate his institute in clinical practice in patna as a distripunj eye hospital now did he is an excellent orator also now uh, i over to satyaprakash dr satyaprakash tiwari for his presentation thank you dr adwal uh, and before you start dr satyar prakash let me quickly remind you we have 17 minutes to go thank you so much yes, sir i will finish it quickly thank you so much uh, sir for kind introduction and including me in this ic and my topic is the role of artificial intelligence in retinal disorders except diabetic retinopathy diabetic retinopathy is one of the most commonly investigated disorder as far as artificial intelligence is being concerned and it is one of the dream project of google as well Sundar Pichai has coordinated and collaborated with Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai and Sankar Netrala, and they are doing a lot of research and study. And uh, coming years, we may see some game-changing equipments in, as far as artificial intelligence in, considered in retinal disorders of diabetic retinopathy. But apart from diabetic retinopathy, in other retinal disorders, most of the things are still in the research phase and at the phase of scientific calculations and research. So. nothing much is available clinical but i would try to rush through each, uh, one slide of all important disorders like hereditary macular degeneration retinopathy of prematurity heredomacular dystrophies and uh, systemic 
diseases, retinal condition, systemic diseases, and then investigations and opioid disorders. So as far as coming to the deep learning in AMD, uh, one of the most important uh, fact we see uh, through deep learning in AMD is um, uh, evaluation of best corrected visual equity and structural changes and respective visual equity in AMD can be tried to map AI algorithm used to predict BCVA in AMD using deep learning techniques of uh, advanced OCT images, SD OCT images. Even artificial intelligence can be used to quantify the geographic atrophy lesions, lesion segmentation, and then fluorescent property with respect to visual function, therefore allow one to impute progression and quality of life. We can uh, see the nature of the lesion and its progression, and then we can say something or predict to our patient about the progression of the disease and quality of life. Uh, and in cases of uh, this delayed rod mediated dark adaptation, RMD is a factor which is a functional biomarker of incipient AMD. So a rod intercept time and macular SD OCT image analysis using deep learning or artificial intelligence showed hyporeflective outer retinal bands on macular SD OCT, which were associated with delayed RMD. This agonistic approach to anatomic biomarker discovery strengthens the rationale of RMDA as an outcome measure in early AMD clinical trials and also it expands the utility of deep learning beyond the automated diagnosis of fundamental discovery. Artificial intelligence in ROP is also becoming a newer modality to uh, correctly screen and diagnose ROP and it is actually automated image analysis and deep learning system for ROP and it has potential to improve ROP care by improving the efficiency, accuracy, and ob objectivity of diagnosis, facilitating the quantitative uh, disease monitoring and uh, risk of prediction. And then development of continuous vascular severity score using IROP deep learning system has improved telemedicine and its use uh, of AI in ROP diagnosis. AI-based telemedicine ROP screening can unburden retinal professionals and it can reach to far-flung areas where the ROP screening facility or expert is not available. Artificial intelligence in ROP diagnosis has actually the convolutional neural network based on fluorescein, white field fluorescein angiography for ROP, that is, uh, that red cam based fluorescein angiography has shifted focus from posterior pole to peripheral retina. Like uh, currently also we are having good red cam which uh, uh, scans the periphery and we can do fluorescein angiogram as well. So now further studies and FA based AI algorithm are required to revise the criteria of ROP treatment. Then uh, apart from this ROP and AMD, artificial intelligence in dystopia and degeneration has also been used. And it has been used to automatic identification of ellipsoid zone in uh, retinitis pigmentosa. To quantify a structural deficit in RP for detecting disease progression and for evaluating treatment effect. Open source convolutional neural network that is CNN is uh, in uh, artificial intelligence automatically identify cone images in choroideremia and it can prognosticate easily with respect to manual counting. Retinal imaging in AI in systemic diseases. Some of the systemic diseases can also be identified using uh, artificial intelligence through retinal images, like cardiovascular diseases, retinal vascular morphology changes can predict any clinical uh, systemic disorder before they appear in uh, appear in the body. Like vascular, uh, by measuring the retinal vessels through vascular caliber and vascular tortuosity. Why there is an advantage in retina? Because retinal vessels are the only vessels in the body which can be seen with the help of instruments or can be imaged uh, without dissecting the that particular organ. We can directly image the retinal vessels. So any vascular changes in retina can be picked up by retinal imaging system. And uh, by uh, using artificial intelligence, we can predict those changes in retinal vessel. And we can assume that these changes are uh, simultaneously being happening in other systems also. And they can appear as a cardiovascular disease or coronary artery disease or whatever. In neurodegenerative disorders as well, like Alzheimer's disease, there is reduction in vascular indices, 
retinal nerve fiber layer and retinal ganglion cell number. Even in dementia, the retinal vascular morphology changes and peripheral erosion can be identified and they can predict of dementia. Then dye-free method to assess thiophilin positivity of retinal MLI deposit from their images in polarized light can predict the presence of early stages of Alzheimer's disease. Retinal fundus image can also be used by deep learning algorithm for, to predict high CSCS, coronary artery calcium score. The visual pattern of retinal fundus image in subject of CSCS more than 100 can be recognized by deep learning algorithm compared to those with no CSC. And in, an inexpensive radiation-free screening method for patient at risk, at risk of coronary vascular disease. So deep learning classification and model demonstrate the feasibility of automatic classification of ultra wide field fluorescein angiography image quality and clinical application of this system will greatly reduce manual image grading workload, allow quality based image presentation to clinicians and provide near instantaneous feedback on image quality during image acquisition for the photographer. AI-based segmentation of retinal layers like early diagnosis of retinal disease and monitoring clinical retinal disease. AI permits more accurate overlay of fundus. Dr. Prakash, just uh, conclude. Otherwise, there is a next speaker. Also. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have just one or two slides. So, retinal hemorrhage can be a sign of many ocular and systemic disorder and as a screening tool automated system based on wide field fundus images may add early diagnosis and management of retinal hemorrhage related to retinal and systemic disease allowing timely referral. AI can also be used to predict the uh, eye scan or predict real melanoma using digital image system. And AI can be used uh, very well in the uh, in cases of vitroretinal educations like deep CNN and then this all outfitted with deep neural network mobile devices can potentially extend the reach of ophthalmologists outside the clinic and provide low cost universal access to vital diagnostic care. So thank you so much, sir. That's all I had to share. Some thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Sadhguru. Thank you, Sadhguru. Thank you. you have enlightened me us. And now we go for the next speaker, Dr. Subhash Prashad. He is post graduation from the RP Center, Ames, New Delhi, and worked as assistant professor in RIO, IGM as partner. Currently, his own his own center, this Divya Drishti Eye Clinic, and officiated secretary. The Chairman Scientific Committee of BOSS. He has been presenting very national and international conference. Now go ahead, Dr. Subhash, for your presentation. Um, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. JJ Agarwal, sir, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, as every speaker has already told so many things about this artificial intelligence, I think I have to apply my natural intelligence to say that artificial intelligence is there, is very much promising and is going to stay, but there are some limitations, there are some deficiency, which are, it's not moving, slide is not moving. My uh, slide is visible? Yes, yes it's visible, it's yeah. moving now. Yeah, yeah. So there are various technical challenges, or you can say that uh, lacunae, which are still there in the artificial intelligence system, because it works basically on the data provided to it and the data which has been labeled or diagnosed by the experts. So uh, it uh, analyzes those things and based on that, it uh, says what is there or not, what is not there. Uh, though it is very much uh, useful and uh, very much uh, you can say that uh, is correct in saying it, but it is, but it definitely lacks 100% accuracy and sensitivity as of now. And in future, I think it is going to improve. So not every image can be identified precisely or it can be missed sometimes by the machine. Even if you change a little bit, the machine sometimes is not able to read. So it doesn't depend only on the computer technique, but the quality of the input images also. And even slight change in the pixel or retinal image can be wrongly interpreted by the artificial intelligence. And besides, there is, uh, there is lack of uniformity amongst the experts who are actually feeding the data. So in that uh, stage or perspective, we can say that some human intervention is always needed to interpret the machine. Uh, the first major challenge is the implement, uh, implementation of the validated artificial intelligence solutions is the need of whole solution, which should be suitable for practical application. And everybody has said that uh, uh, there is a dark uh, box phenomenon uh, which says that the that we, machine which sometimes identifies is not explainable. So that problem is there, still there and it, it will improve with time because 
this technology you, you can say that now we are using this in various machines in, in various forms but the deeper level of the learning is going to improve day by day uh, at this point of time the machine is able to say something about independent classification of single eye disease but if the same patient has multiple eye disease it is not possibly uh, uh, that much accurate in the saying what the disease patient has uh, there are always chances of misclassified patients and these can be as uh, this can be false positive and false negative so these are the limitations there are ethical and legal challenges also and because of the misclassification where does the liability lies because if if gets wrong interpretation then who is responsible the artificial intelligence technology provider or the person so there is some uh, some chance of uh, you can say that uh, uh, shifting the responsibility the socio cultural challenges are there we still lack lack uh, infrastructure and there are many places where there is lack of proper electricity or internet facility so it's not going to be that much useful as of now so there are so many challenges in india and the obstacle is the access to data the, there are a lot of data india is rich of the uh, population and so many patients has so many diseases so the india is very much rich in data but the problem of accessing this data and not only that the quality of data is also very important and everybody doesn't have the same kind of instrument or the, you can say the image capturing device and there is lack of robust regulatory regime also which again uh, causes some problem with anonymization also uh, in india it ha- it lacks a regulatory authority for artificial intelligence and intelligence as of now currently but in coming days it is going to improve day by day uh, and the infrastructure also will be improving our government the current government is also very much uh, proactive in the implementing artificial intelligence intelligence not only in the healthcare sector but in many uh, situations so the uh, future is very promising and uh, we hope that uh, most of the uh, diseases of the eye will be able to be diagnosed by a person who is not very much trained in uh, in uh, clinically diagnosing it so there is always scope of not mixing missing so much of the underprivileged population or those populations who are not able to reach to the doctors and they can just uh, go to these devices do the to these centers where even the less trained person can screen and tell about what disease is then the these things same can be referred to the experts and the role of experts there will come into play and in the meantime they are not necessarily Uh, just wasting their time in screening so that is the future or that is the importance of this artificial intelligence so i won't go into that much detail but uh, just i want to conclude because of the paucity of time that it is a very promising uh, thing which is going to happen in the future and currently also a lot of things are being done and we hope that in coming days when we are not able to analyze so many things this artificial intelligence machine is going to tell us what to do what what not to do what not to do like in uh, iol power cal- calculation we have seen that now the iol car- uh, power calculation or biometry has improved tremendously like in screening of diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma and so many things so the future is always very bright so thank you very much again dr jj agrawal sir for giving me this opportunity thank you dr subhash for your nice presentation and uh, current limitation and the future of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, in india now though it is a very promising but we still lack of ma- many infrastructures like a good camera good electricity good uh, internet so without this it is not possible for to uh, appreciate artificial intelligence i want to uh, ask some questions uh, like uh, from dr abhishek now water abhishek is there no okay we can anybody share that uh, how it will be useful in uh, diabetic uh, retinopathy how can we use as a practitioner uh, the help we can how can we get, get the help of artificial intelligence in our day to day practice can anyone explain so it is already being used like in some form like teleophthalmology where the uh, image are captured by a uh, less trained technician and then they are sent uh, in this situation where artificial intelligence is going to completely override that in the sense that it will automatically say that which patient uh, needs uh, what kind of treatment so that's my understanding but uh, of course dr abhishek would tell more yeah. so in that way whether any, whether any software is available in the market 
or you, how can we upload the data actually sir, sir some work is being done between the google and uh, albi prasad and uh, so i have, a, I have a, only preliminary knowledge that is some software is there and we have to purchase that software and from that software we can upload the data of, uh, that is from pictures from the good camera and we get the interpretation after uh, getting uh, uh, after putting the data from in the cloud and then uh, they interpret it and then put back the message to us what is the uh, diagnosis and what is the stage of the disease and uh, how it will be treated is and even they also t tell us the we uh, how to proceed in, in this patient now i don't know uh, much but uh, if anybody is here to then we can they can explain it's the evolving branch sir the evolving and progressing uh, yeah okay so okay time is over, okay think. thank you all uh, thank you all of you the, all our presenters uh, are we have given the very good good presentation now i think we are in time thank you dr agarwal for keeping this in time i really appreciate this thank you so much okay thank you thank you all speakers and uh, thank, thank you, you thank you all thank you all